38 Short Colt versus 32 Smith and Wesson. I'm going to compare these two rounds and snub those revolvers. And the reason why I'm doing this is because a lot of people talk about going to a 22 long rifle or 22 Magnum or something like that for a lower recoil option for their handguns for somebody that might not be able to handle recoil. But the funny thing is they probably have something within what they already have that will work for a re low recoil option. And that is to take a lesser a lesser sized cartridge for a cartridge family and fired through that revolver. Now a lot of people know that the 327 Magnum can fire lesser cartridges like the 32 H and R Magnum, 32 Smith and Wesson Long, and 32 Smith and Wesson. Most people, however, when I talk to them, they, they tell me that the 357 Magnum can fire 357 and 38 Special and they leave it at that. But the truth of the matter is that the 357 family of cartridges is just as versatile as the 32 family of cartridges. The 32, we got the 327 Federal, we got the 32 h and we got the 32 Smith & Wesson Long, and the 32 Smith & Wesson. However, the 357 family, we have 357 Magnum, 38 Special, and before that, we had 38 Long Colt, and before that, 38 Short Colt. And these are all compatible in these, in these particular revolvers. So if you have a 357 Magnum, you can fire those four cartridges. If you have a 327, you can fire those four cartridges. And the recoil is going to be similar to a 22 caliber without actually having to get a different firearm. So I'm going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. And then as always, we're going to go through the Juggernaut box, which contains a one and three quarter inch pack of bologna, kind of simulates flesh, covered by four layers of denim, followed by a one quarter inch medium density fiberboard that kind of simulates uh, sternum or ribs into water jugs to catch these, these bullets. And how this setup normally works is out the back of the second jug is about 12 inches comparison to ballistics gel back of the third about 15 inches back of the fourth about 18 inches so will we will we get comparable to something more mainstream like nine millimeter which usually gets in about the third jug so we'll find out and also i want to go a little bit longer range go 25 yards with these cartridges just to kind of see where they impact at 25 yards so let's get started with the test I'm about five yards from the target, about four yards from the chronograph. First, we'll try the 38 short Colt and see how these, these do. Six twenty one. Six thirty five. Six oh four. Six fourteen. Six twenty nine. That's pretty pretty good accuracy, I would say, overall for what it is. Pretty low energy and velocity though. Let's see how the 32 Smith & Wesson compares. 32 Smith & Wesson, we'll see how this does. 561. 597. 575. 483, that's not good. 587, I'll run one more. 579 so we had one that was a little bit low but what i can say about recoil here this was less than the recoil of a 22 less it's pretty incredible to have it that low now let's hit the ballistic box and see how they compare to each other all right 38 short colt i don't know what to expect with this but we'll see what we get here Actually got splashed with water. I wasn't expecting to get any splash whatsoever. Pretty cool. All right, the baloney pack is still on here and we went through the entire thing, of course. So we definitely know it's gonna punch through ribs or sternum after going through flush. That's something to be said about it. First jug has a pretty good amount of damage for what it is. You know, obviously we went right straight through, but there's actually a lot of fiberboard in here. So it put a lot of that fiberboard into the jug there. Very interesting. Jug two, we went right through two. I've seen impact on three. I see a slight impact on four. And it looks like we went out the back of three. It looks like we hit four. And the bullet is in four. There's no mark out the back of four, so we're gonna have to take a kind of an educated guess and say, about 16 to 17 inches of penetration.
Now we have imprint in the lead here, so that means it's actually a very soft lead. It deformed. So it deformed, got flat enough to slow it down. So we had adequate penetration. This is adequate for self-defense, no doubt, from the amount of um, penetration we got there. Let's try the 32 Smith & Wesson and see how that does. 32 Smith & Wesson, we'll see how this compares to the 38 Short Colt. All right, no splash. Good hit here though, centered hit. All right, we went through the baloney pack and we made it through that pack as well. Interesting. In fact, in jug one, there's also a lot of fiberboard in here. Pretty decent sized hole. We went through one, here's two. Right through two, I see an impact on three. And we have a dent out the back of three and the bullet is in three. So that's going to indicate 15 inches of penetration in comparison to ballistics gel. And what we see here is pretty similar. A little bit of uh, flattening of that tip. It's the imprint of the fabric in the bullet, so it's soft lead. Did quite well for what it is. Now let's shoot out at 25 yards just to kind of see where these, these rounds are hitting. Point of aim, point of impact at that distance. All right, from a distance of 25 yards, 38 short call. See what we get. All right. All right, one more time with the short call. I was aiming right about here on that silhouette just to make sure I don't hit my secondary camera down there. And it hit about the right elevation, so I'm going to aim center mass and see where these group. All right. All right, not the best group in the world. I'm going to go back with the 32 Smith & Wesson, do the same thing, aim about here. Make sure they're not dropping, and then I'll go for a center mass group to see how they group. 32 Smith & Wesson, we'll see how these do. All right. And if we're not trying very much, that's kind of interesting. Four headshots at 25 yards. I wasn't aiming necessarily there, I was aiming right about here. One, two, three, four, five, six, but they're all on cardboard. That's a very fun round to shoot. Wasn't even trying whatsoever. I'll slow it down and go for center mass and just see how they impact like that. All right, 32 Smith and Wesson, I'll slow it down just a tad, go for center mass, see where I'm hitting. Right, my elevation was a little bit off here, uh, but not really horrible for a little snubby at 25 yards. So really interesting results here. All right, so my summer between 32 Smith & Wesson and 38 Short Colt, they both proved to be effective at my self-defense simulation target here. They both got adequate penetration. I would say 38 Short Colt did a little bit better in that regard, however, this gun weighs 17 ounces, this gun weighs about 21 ounces. I can say with absolute certainty that the 32 Smith & Wesson had half the recoil as the 38 Short Colt. It's a substantial difference there. This, this was less than a 22 long rifle to me, what it felt like. And one of the most important things to think about here, if somebody's gonna use a 22 long rifle, something like that, first thing they gotta think about is energy numbers. Energy numbers might be similar to this out of a short barrel handgun. However, what you're often trying to do with, with, with any, any smaller round is you're trying to get expansion, trying to get hollow point expansion. You're not going to get a 22 long rifle to expand. This is already over 30 caliber. It's about 312 caliber. It's going to mushroom out a little bit even more than that. 
And not only that, but an 88 grain bullet versus your typical 30 to 40 grain 22 long rifle. You have an 88 grain bullet, you're going to have more momentum. And mom what momentum will do when it hits a target like a living target is it's going to push through. It's, it's going to hit resistance. And because there's a little bit of weight there, it's going to want to keep pushing through. So something like a 22, it might hit with a lot of energy. It might hit fast. It might hit with more speed, more velocity. You might get more expansion, but the momentum's not there. Even though this is really low recoil, low energy, like a 22, 32 Smith & Wesson, you got that bullet weight, you got that momentum, as where you're not going to have that with a with a really light, low energy 22 caliber round. 38 Colt, 38 short Colt, excellent little round. Its recoil is, is less than a 38 Special. It's not substantially less, but it is less. So the takeaway from this is both of these rounds are an excellent low recoil round, and if you take this, the advantage of the 38 short Colt is there's a lot of heavy, very heavy. 357 Magnum revolvers or 38 Special revolvers. So 21 ounces. There's plenty of revolvers that are twice the weight of this. And when you put that 38 short Colt in twice the weight of this, you're going to have the same half recoil that you're having with this. And a 327 is not quite as available out there as an option. So that's your options there. Don't go to a 22 when you got these options. When you can just you can just select uh, different ammunition. So that's what you get today between 38 long. 38 short Colt, I should say. 38 short Colt and 32 Smith & Wesson. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.